Allow me to take you and you and all of you on a journey that started long time ago, far away place where a little boy that grew in a small place, one room apartment with nine family members, all the way to now when this little boy is making an impact in the AI revolution. This morning, 400 people got up from bed, went to work for companies that are founded or co-founded. But this not where, that's not where I started. I would like to share with you my journey, but I'm, the, I'm hoping that in this process that you will get some of the blueprint for your success as well. Imagine that there is a time machine on the stage, and I'm taking you with me on a ride when you were five years old. You have blank canvas to draw your future plan, and you have book with blank pages to fill in the details. Imagine what your future can be today when you can fill in this information without any limits of time, space, and any constraint. When I grew up, the world was different. There was no phone, television, and radio were very scarce, even if you can afford them, which our family could not afford, that's not available. Food, of the basic food like sugar and butter, was rationed. My mother used to get three apples a week because she had a baby to feed. So what you had to rely on was books, as well as the daily gathering with your family about the storytelling. I remember dreaming and visualizing me being in a place that is going to have tall green trees as far as the eye can see, surrounding a small blue lake. Every night before I go to sleep, this is what I will visualize. And I'll visualize that I'm standing near the lake and I'm looking at all of these trees. When I was five years old, we moved to a single room plus a bedroom for my parents. Six of us kids with one grandma sharing a small room. My father had fruits and vegetable store, and all of us expected to work and support the family. After hours, when you went, you finished school, you will go and spend time helping in the store. In terms of having physical things, we were very limited in terms of means. We never went hungry, but we never felt poor either, even though we had really nothing to, to show for. And I remember that the first time that I, ate, I saw steak was when I came to Canada, and I saw this big piece of meat, and I did not know what to do with it, for something that can feed up a family of four for a week. So until now, I'm still mainly vegetarian. <laughs> so I achieved my dream when I was 22. I came to Canada to see these big trees and lakes with million trees and million lakes. With $500 in my pocket and wardrobe that did not fit the winters of Canada. I was very elated that Algonquin College agreed to accept me to take the engineering class diploma. And uh, I recall the challenges that I had with the English, as my English was very poor at that time. And I had to rely on the Flintstone to, sub <laughs> to supplement my learning in the English during the classes. And I recall that the first semester when I was taking a physics class and the topic was acceleration and velocity and I had no clue what the professor was talking about. I will go home, look up at the dictionary, yes there was no internet back then, there was a physical book, probably so, some of you don't know that that exists, <laughs> that you had to look at the words and then study at, until midnight preparing for the next day because the, the words were just very difficult for me to understand. 
My wife and I had to live near the school because we cannot afford the bus. Our entertainment will be taking a bus once a while, maybe every two, three weeks, to the shopping center to do window shopping because we had no money and just have ice cream cone for dessert, and that was our entertainment. But again, even though we had no means, we, had, uh, we never felt poor because we had goals. And my goals with my wife were to get my master's degrees, second, first and second degree from university, have a home, and have a family by the time I, I was 30 years old. The low point of our life in school was when we got the one Christmas of 76 to have $200 in the bank, $180 for the rent and $18 for the other means. But again, we survived and we managed. Now, when I became 31 years old, I achieved these three goals. We had a house, we moved into a house, I achieved my both degrees, and we, we had a baby. I want, while doing the time, spending time with my family when I grew up, I mentioned to you that we did a lot of storytelling, which is something that I really miss now because with all the social media and television and so on, you don't spend as much time together. And that was a really awesome time. And my parents taught me the notion of commitment, making commitment and meeting expectations. So the story is like that. An aging father wants to teach his younger son the value of hard work, the value of making commitment, the value of meeting your commitment and meeting expectation, yours and others. So he tells the child that he's going to give him all of his wealth if the child will generate $10 of real money of hard, by working hard, he'll get all of his wealth. The first month, the child plays around, being the youngest, he was just fooling around the whole time. At the end of the month, he goes to his mother, his mother gives him $10. The father takes the $10, throws it in the burning fire. The child looks at the $10 being burning, and he leaves. The next month, again, he spends all of his time fooling around. At the end of the month, he goes to his brothers and sisters, who gladly giving him the $10. Again, the father takes the money and throws it into the burning fire. The child doesn't care. He has one month left. He realizes if he doesn't do something, he's going to lose all of his inheritance. So he decided to go to the village and earn the money by working, but he has no skills. So what does he do? He goes and he beg and help people with manual labor. And he gets one penny here, one penny there, and before the month ends, he has $10 of pennies. He runs to his father and says, Here, father, I got the money. The father takes the bag, throws it into the fire. At this point, though, the child runs into the fire with his bare hand, remove the money. That's the value of commitment. That's the value that you have when you work hard, you appreciate your accomplishment. You have to meet the expectation of others, but more importantly, you have to meet your expectation of what you expect from yourself. If you want to succeed, you have to work hard and make sure that everybody outside and everybody inside, inside your head, that you're meeting this expectation. I want to leave the past and talk about how I got into the business world. So, barely a week after our firstborn arrived, I left with the blessings of my, of my wife to go on a three-month contract. I left a secure job, high-paying job, and went on a three-month contract. That was my initiation into the business world. Why did I do that? I felt that two things. I was not challenged enough, and I wanted to make a difference in the life of people. It was really important to me. So, since then, I went on to found and co-found seven companies, 
that generated over half a billion dollars for the Ottawa economy. But what I would like to describe for you now is the blueprint for success that I'm hoping that each one of you will be able to follow and adopt to make a difference in your life. But before that, you ask, why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? I had three successful exits. I can really go to Hawaii and enjoy the fruit of hard labor. Why? Because this five years old is not done yet. I still want to make a difference in the life of people, in the life of Ottawa, in the life in Canada. I want to make a difference. So I'm hoping now to share with you this blueprint that if I could done it with all the hardship, the challenges that I had, every one of you can do it. Let's start with number one. Each one of you have only two things that you control. You control your attitude and you control your action. Nothing more, nothing less. You cannot do anything more than that. I'm not going to talk about your action because all of you are smart and you can take care of the action. But it's the attitude that I find in many people that is lacking, and this is something that you can easily change. Number one, you have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe that you can jump a step, you'll never jump. In order to succeed, you have to believe in yourself. And I'm going to go back to a cartoon, Winnie the Pooh. I'm sure that most of you and your child have seen it and read about it. Christopher Robin told Winnie the Pooh, you are braver than you believe. You are stronger than you seem. You are, smart, you are smarter than you think. So if you do that, if you believe in yourself, that's the starting point. Number two, the most difficult thing that I've seen in my career is people comparing themselves against others. It's a losing proposition. You can never be better than somebody else, and it's irrelevant. What you have to do is compare yourself against yourself and make sure that you are bettering yourself. You set up goals. When I set up the goals, it took me 17 years from five-year-old to 22 before I got my first goal, and then another 11 years or nine years to get to my next sets of goals. You don't have to achieve it all at once. And it doesn't matter what other people are doing. It's what you are doing. Number three, lifelong learning. My seventh company is the only common denominator was that they're in high tech. But there were real-time embedded system, there were internet, and now artificial intelligence. You have to learn new things, unlearn old habits, and relearn new things. Lifelong learning. The day that you stop learning is the day that you stop growing. Number four, remember the attitude. You have to decide to succeed. If you don't decide to succeed, you'll never succeed. And you need three things. One, a dream, plan, an idea. Two, you have to set up the steps to get there. And three, timeline. Many people forget the timeline. You, if you don't have a timeline, you just wander around. The fifth point is you have to help others. What I found that the companies gave me a vehicle to help others. In many situations, people are smart enough to chart their own way. But I find in some situations, people are not able to shine. And using the company gave me the ability to offer this opportunity to many people that cannot, that were overlooked. And I can tell you there is nothing better to hear when people call you and say, you made a difference in my life. And the last one is giving back. You live in a community. I want to make a difference in Ottawa, in Canada, and in the world. It's really important to me. So if you know what you hear, rising tide raises all boats. Today, I'm the CEO 
of MindBridge AI, a company that uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to uncover anomalies in financial data. The impact of artificial intelligence on the world is compared to the impact of electricity. Everything that we imagined, that we thought about before is going to change. But artificial intelligence, known also as the fourth industrial revolution, is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And we are the initial 100 meters of this marathon. And it's going to end up in singularity when a machine will be able to mimic and behave as powerful as a human being. When I grew up, the world was different. There was no internet. There was no cell phone. There was no social media. Today, each one of you have this in the fingertips. You have a world that is connected, and you can travel anywhere with a jet. If you can imagine it, you can accomplish it. What you have to do is believe in yourself, set a plan, and visualize it. Be like the sports people that are visualizing them. They are standing on a podium, getting the gold medal. It's not enough. You have to visualize every night what you want to accomplish. And I cannot stop by telling you, if I succeeded with all the hardship that we had and challenges, each one of you can. And I'm going to use what the Roman used to do, the battle cry, to say, Carpa diem. Seize the day. Seize the moment. Go and dream and visualize your own green trees and blue lake. And go and conquer your own mountains. Thank you.